Today, we are looking at a loudspeaker that's three years old already, but it's on my to-do list for 2023, so here we are with a pair of Wharfdale Linton. And these aren't manufacturer loaners, I bought them. This episode is brought to you by Primair's new SPA25 Prisma, the home cinema integrated amplifier designed for both music and movies. Go to primair.net for more information. Welcome back everybody. Today we start with a question. Are you a TV person or are you a projector kind of person? Do you prefer the better saturated colors but the smaller image of a TV or do you prefer the larger image but the kind of slightly washed out colors of a projector? Because this is an important question that we'll be coming back to later. Now when the Linton arrived at my door it's as if the four boxes, four boxes, pre-announced their high value quotient. Because we get two loudspeakers in separate boxes and two stands in separate boxes. And once we unbox them, we realize that the stands themselves double as vinyl storage. And I don't know why more manufacturers don't do that because I think it's, yeah, it's pretty damn clever. And once we have the loudspeakers set up on their stands and the spikes in the shoes on the floor, we can see pretty clearly that the Linton's walnut veneer, I think it's a walnut in this case, and the very dark grills, they are removable, but they're a bit of a pain to pull off as I'll explain later, and their overall shape mark the Linton as very much a vintage S loudspeaker. They kind of wear this with pride because I believe this loudspeaker was introduced by Wharfdale to celebrate 85 years of Wharfdale. And they went back and looked at a design from the 70s. Or was it the 60s? I'm pretty sure it was the 70s, but I could be wrong. If I am, let me know in the comments. And they just basically modernized that with modern components. So 21st century drivers, 21st century crossover, 21st century cabinet. 21st century everything, but just maintained that vintage, that mid-century modern look. For example, the cabinets are high density chipboard sandwiched between two layers of MDF. And the fit and finish here really puts the boot in on the argument that made in China means low quality because these loudspeakers are beautifully finished, especially for their 1200 euro, I think they are, 1200 euro asking price. That's for both loudspeakers with both the stands. And the Linton's mid-century modern aesthetics call for an amplifier that looks, looks the part. And I went with the NAD C3050LE that we reviewed a few months ago. As you probably know, it's a vintage looking amp, although the veneers don't quite match. And to the NAD amplifier, which already has the streaming smarts and the, the DAC built in, I connected a Cambridge Audio Alva TT2 turntable. And as I lowered the needle on Amorphous Androgynous' Tales of Ephedrina, I hear the, the, the thump of the needle hitting the record, and that's the sound of the 20 centimeter Kevlar bass driver waking up. And the ports here, there are two of them, they're on the back of the speaker. And the second thing I noticed from the Lintons with that Amorphous Androgynous album, especially on side two, is the presence of the kick drum. The Linton deliver a very present low end and with a, I think, thicker than average mid bass to kind of really round it out to make sure that you don't miss it. And this 20 centimeter Kevlar bass driver works in tandem with a 12 and a half centimeter Kevlar mid-range driver to really add a lot of solidity to the phantom center drawn between the loudspeakers. Even though I would say that I don't think player placement is the most precise that I've heard. But on the other hand, that mid-range driver and that bass driver really lend extra weight to vocals, to male vocals especially. And I'm thinking of Nick Cave and Tom Waits. These are great speakers for letting either of those two artists rip. Back with the Amorphous Androgynous record, there isn't the sparkle up top with the Lintons as there is with, say, the Monitor Audio Silver 107G that I have in green 
or the KEF LS50 Meta. But please note, despite the presence of B-roll right now of the KEF LS50 Meta, I no longer own them. I sold them several months ago to clear space in my apartment. So it's not really a side-by-side -side comparison. It's drawn from memory, which is highly, highly unreliable. And in fact, you probably just should ignore what I just said for the last 30 seconds. However, I still have the monitor audio here, and that's a side-by-side -side comparison that we'll be delving deeper into in a moment. Now, the Wharfdale's top end is enabled by a 25 millimeter soft dome tweeter, and it's offset slightly. I guess that's to reduce the symmetry of edge diffraction from the speaker cabinet because it protrudes slightly around the edge. That's part of the mid-century modern design. And there's a slight shortfall of recording hall ambience and air, and I guess air bite as well from the lower treble that you do get in other speakers selling for this kind of money. But yeah, I think these Lintons sound just a smidge rolled off at the top, but it's by no means a deal break or anything like that. And in fact, when you get the grills off, some of that complaint goes away. Now, Wharfdale recommends that you listen with the grills on, but I much prefer to look at them with the grills off, and I much prefer to listen to them with the grills off. But getting the grills off is a pain, and don't do what I do and resort to a knife to just prise them off a little bit, because I scratch the veneer on each cabinet in doing so, and I think you just have to work really hard to remove the grills the first time you do it, but after that it gets a bit easier because when we were filming the B-roll, I was saying to Olaf, oh my God, this is really hard, and you know, get ready for my struggle. <laughs> I just popped it off straight away. And even with the grills off, what these speakers lack in laser-guided precision and resolution, they more than make up for in a very easygoing listening nature. And that makes it possible to listen to music for a very, very long time. I can't remember a time where I just sat and listened to speakers, or rather music through speakers, I almost fell into the audio file trap there, didn't I? Listen to music through speakers for days at a time and not really think about, this is a cliche coming, oh my God, not really think about the, the speakers in play. I've got a pair of Bowers and Wilkins in the hallway, which are more expensive, I think they're gonna be a much more resolving speaker. And normally, in normal circumstances, I would be keener to unbox those. But I had the Wharfdales in thinking, no, nope, don't want to change them, very happy with this sound, and I can listen to, yeah, a lot of very different music for hours and hours and hours and just not want to make any changes. And that means the Linton can be matched with brighter sounding electronics. And you can't say that about the monitor audio Silver 100 7G. You've got to be careful with those. With the Linton, pretty much anything goes really. In fact, I would stay away from warmer sounding electronics because it might be too much of a, a good thing. But generally speaking, oh God, I'm going to really generalize here. And I know people are going to object to this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think you tend to find brighter sounding electronics at the at the entry level. So if you buy one of those really cheap Class D amps from Amazon, I think you're gonna find that it's gonna be a good match for the Linton because that thing's probably gonna be bright. My experience with those kind of cheap amps is that they're pretty damn bright. They're cheap, yes, they're cheerful, yes, but they're also bright. But the Wharfdale won't complain about them in the way that the monitor audio will just take your head off. In fact, the Silver 100 7G offer a livelier, zippier treble than the Wharfdale Linton, and they also offer greater clarity. So for example, if we play Bjork's last truly great record, let's be honest here, it was Vespertine from 2001, we don't get much of the gossamery top end from the Wharfdale Linton that we do get from the monitor audio loudspeakers. Or rather the monitor audio expose Bjork's sort of intricacies better than the Linton. But on the other hand, at the other end of the frequency spectrum, the Linton are more emphatic in their bass thump and punch than the monitor audio. And to me, the Wharfdale sound the more balanced of the two speakers when playing Fotex, the hidden camera EP, which is a very intense clattering 
pseudo-semi-industrial drum and bass record. So I think the Linton are better with that kind of edgier recording. To wit, if I play the Hold Steady's Boys and Girls in America, which is a loud, raucous, Springsteen-influenced record from about 2008, I'm less likely to wince when playing it through the Lintons and turning up the volume than I am when doing the same through the Silver 107G. On dynamic excitement, I would say that these two loudspeakers are fairly evenly matched. But the monitor audio's higher transparency factor, especially in the upper mid-range, makes it easier to track the rhythmic subtleties that sort of ripple through Radiohead's Hail to the Thief. And those rhythmic subtleties, the Linton tend to just smooth over just a bit. Just a bit. On soundstage size, the Linton sound bigger in all directions than the monitor audio. But I think the Linton would be a better fit for larger listening rooms than this. I think the monitor audio are perfect for this listening room. And I'm not saying that the Linton are a bad fit. They're really not. But I think I could take them to Portugal and they would work just as well in my much larger, acoustically speaking, listening space there. And I can't say that about the Silver 107G. I think the Linton are much more likely to satisfy people with larger listening spaces than the monitor audio there. And perhaps the best way to encapsulate the differences between these two loudspeakers, the Wharfdale Linton and the monitor audio Silver 107G, is to come back to the question that I asked at the start of this video. And that is, do you prefer a TV or a projector? Because for me, I think the monitor audio better ink tonal colors and therefore are closer to a normal LED LCD TV. But the Wharfdale Linton go bigger in all directions. They're not quite as detailed as the monitor audio, but they're more like a projector. Because the Linton really are for people who like to be engulfed by sound and feel like a much weightier bottom end. I mean, I wouldn't put necessarily a subwoofer with either loudspeaker, but I would be less likely to add one to the Linton than the monitor audio. So the Wharfdale Linton sonic appeal, I think, is more physical than cerebral. And even though this isn't one of the most detailed sounding loudspeakers that I've heard at this price point, it is definitely, possibly, the most agreeable. And it doesn't force us to think hard about the electronics that we use to drive the loudspeakers and further up the, the system chain. And that kind of reminds me of a headphone that looks a little bit similar to the Wharfdale's actually, the Meze 99 Classics. I think the Linton are to loudspeakers what the 99 Classics are to entry-level headphones, in that they're super easy going and well suited to all day listening to magazine, I guess we call that new wave, and then the proto-punk of McCluskey. And you can't say that about many speakers. And perhaps best of all, well certainly for me anyway, the Wharfdale Linton are an absolute joy to look at. They are proper pieces of audio furniture because loudspeakers, let's face it, they are audio furniture. So if you're new to Hi-Fi and you're feeling pretty overwhelmed by the number of speakers available to you at this price point, I suggest that you start your loudspeaker audition journey with the Wharfdale Linton and then benchmark everything else against it because they are stylish enough for most people, most normal people's listening rooms. And they won't have you second guessing about whether you need a subwoofer or not, unless you've got an enormous listening room. And they'll play well with most any reasonably powerful amplifier. I mean, I guess I wouldn't go below 40 or 50 watts here, but they'll play nicely with the, I guess, less rounded sounding amplifiers that you get on Amazon, the cheap ones. But if you have something like a Cambridge Audio or a Rotel or a Marantz, I think any of those would be a great fit for the Linton because the Linton is so agreeable. And it won't expose any brightness in the top end because the tweeter 
is very accommodating because yeah, it's just a little bit rolled off. Or rather, I didn't notice an ounce of brightness even threatening to break through. Whereas I do sometimes from the monitor audio, I did from the Kef every now and again, but from the Linton, no, never. And therefore, and despite their old school appearance, I think the Linton are very well suited to modern pop music and modern rock music, hip hop, anything just modern where it's more likely to have had its dynamic range sandblasted by the mastering engineer in the studio. So I guess what I'm saying here is it's just really, really hard to go wrong with these Wharfdale Linton. I think they are a proper everyman speaker if you like the, the mid-century modern styling, but generally I think a lot of people do, a lot of young people do. I know some of you old timers have seen it all before, but anybody under 50 might not have been there in the 70s when you got married. So they won't remember all the, the Danish furniture and the East German furniture and all the stuff that costs mega money in mid-century modern vintage revivalist furniture stores now. And that aesthetic is really what these loudspeakers are playing to. Anyway, I've said enough, apart from the fact, and this is something I'd never mention in these videos, but I am gonna start mentioning it in future. I have a thing called a Darko Award, a D-A-R-K-O, Knockout Award, which I award to products that I think go above and beyond the standard, the usual standard at their price point. Because if you give everything an award, nothing is award worthy. So I'm giving these out sparingly, but I'm giving a Darko Award to the Wharfdale Linton. Anyway, if you like this video, please consider giving us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards yeah, Everyman Hi-Fi that works for a vast number of people, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.